The Little Lie by Jade Maitre Far, far away, in a land where the wind blew in gusts over green sloping hills and the sea bashed joyfully on the rocks, lived a little boy called Luca. Luca lived in a lighthouse with no windows save for one at the very top where his bedroom was and where the lamp let out its glare to tell the ships that it was there. There was not very much to read in a lighthouse and it was not easy to read either especially if you wanted to read in your bedroom, because in the daytime the window was taken up by the large lamp and the sun found it hard to get in. In the night time, Luca could only read a word every few seconds when the lamp would swish its way past and everything would go blinding for a moment. But Luca loved reading and so he did his best. He went outside and read in the garden, though the weather was blustery and the wind would turn the pages before he could. He read in the kitchen too, by the light from the oven, when his mother was cooking jelly rolls and casseroles. In this way, Luca read all four books in the lighthouse, and when he had finished, he read them again. Yet, living in a lighthouse with only four books is no life for a small boy who loves to read. His parents misunderstood his yearning and thought only that he might be lonely. And so, when they met a little girl who lived in a passing submarine, they invited her in to play with him. The little girl was called Lily. She loved to read too, but there is not much room for books in submarines. She only had one book. It was a book about the tides, because her father thought that if they could only fit one book into a submarine, it was useful to have a book that two people could read. Lily loved that book. It had a red cover and it had marks on it, because she carried it everywhere. Today, Lily appeared at the door to the lighthouse, clutching the book beneath her arm. Hello, she said. Hello, Luca replied. They looked at each other for a long while, Luca in the doorway and Lily on the step. Are you going to invite her in, said Luca's mother, and so he did. Once they had eaten, Luca showed Lily his upstairs room. He showed her how the light spun on its base and lit up the whole of the sea. He showed her his four books. Lily liked looking at Luca's four books, but she did not want to show Luca her own book, which she kept tightly pressed beneath her arm. Luca wanted to ask her to look at it, but he did not know how to ask. At that moment, a huge commotion appeared on the horizon. It was a storm. A big, dark storm striding across the whipped waves. Lily went very pale as she ran to the window. As she stood against it looking out, she was so worried that the book slipped from under her arm and fell upon the cushions on the floor. But Lily didn't notice. I have to go, she cried. Mama and Papa are in the submarine. She ran down the stairs all the way to the bottom and then sprinted across the lawn. Luca watched her little red shoes flying behind her as the storm came in. But although the storm was wild outside his window, Luca felt something very calm and quiet inside, because Luca had seen when Lily dropped the book. But for some reason, Luca hadn't told her, although he could have. He just thought it wouldn't be so bad if he could borrow the book for a while. Lily wouldn't mind. It was just a book. The storm had passed. The sea was bleached and lank, as though tired. Night fell early, and Luca did not tell his parents about the book. Did you have a good time with Lily? They asked him. Yes, Luca said. What did you do up there in your bedroom? They asked. We looked at the lamp, he said. Luca said a little lie. It wasn't something very bad. He just didn't want his parents to know that he'd read books with Lily because they might ask about her book. He didn't want them to know about Lily's book because they might tell him to take it back. Shall we read one of your books tonight before you go to bed? Asked his parents. No, said Luca. I'm feeling tired. But Luca wasn't feeling tired. That was another little lie. He wanted to read the book. He went back to his bedroom and read one word every time the lamp flashed past. By midnight he was very tired and had only read one third of the book. But what a wondrous book! He had never known so many things about the tides. When they came in and when they went out. What moon brought what creatures and what swell could take you to Germany or Guinea? As he turned each page, Luca realised that he never wanted to give the book back. He could see why Lily loved it. Yet the next morning he was very, very tired. He got up out of bed very late. His parents were surprised to see him so sleepy. 
Lily came past, they told him. She asked if she left her book here. Luca felt the blood rush to his face, but it felt like the words came by themselves. No, he said, I haven't seen a book. That was the biggest little lie, and it felt like they were coming one on top of the other now, like the waves in a storm. The next night, Luca intended to do the same thing as the first night. He snuck into his bedroom and read Lily's book. The words were as wonderful as ever. But this time, something felt a little different in Luca too. He felt strange when he turned each page. He kept imagining Lily in her submarine, floating in the water, gazing at the black roof with no words on it. How lonely she must feel without her special book. And now Luca had five. The following morning, the feeling inside him had grown and it felt like a big, hard lump in his belly. As big and hard as the beautiful book he had stolen. And that heavy feeling felt bad and he couldn't shake it off. It followed him and made his feet drag. It made his smile feel strange when he smiled at his parents and his eyes sting as though he was opening them too wide or not wide enough. As the day passed, Luca slowly knew what he had to do. He felt very sorry that he had not told anyone that he had the book. He didn't know why he had done it, but Lily's book belonged to Lily. He picked the book up, walked all the way to the submarine and asked if he could speak to her. And when Lily popped up the porthole, her face red and sad from crying and missing her book, he gave Lily her book back. I had it all along, he said. I wanted to read it, but I didn't tell the truth when you asked if I had it. I'm sorry. It was very hard to say those words to Lily. It made him feel ashamed of himself, even though he didn't know why he'd done it. He worried that Lily would think he was unkind. But instead, Lily's face beamed as she embraced her book once more. What a lovely thing to tell the truth, she said. That must have been very hard for you. Thank you, Luca. And Luca suddenly felt as tall as his lighthouse. Shall we read the book together? Lily asked. And Luca and Lily became, from that day forwards, the very best of friends. The end. Thank you for reading with storyberries.com. Free stories for kids.